you told us a couple weeks ago that there's no chance Adrian <laughs> Peterson just, lasts this season in New Orleans. <laughs> you were right. So Peterson traded to the Cardinals thank, thank this week. You. He'll make his debut against the Bucks tomorrow. He could barely hide his excitement when that he met with weird. reporters yeah, in Arizona. I know it's so strange to see him in that uniform. Uh, he thanked Jesus for the change of scenery when he met with reporters. Really? Mm-hmm. I have so much left, you know. Uh, you know, I look to play at least four or five more years, you know, um, God's willing. Um, I, have, I have a lot left in the tank, you know, so, you know, uh, stay tuned, stay tuned, and you, you guys will be able to see, see that firsthand. That train in the background sounded <laughs> right. a little ominous, right. not going to lie. Uh, Adrian Peterson had just 81 yards in four games with the Saints. We want to know, will he have more than 81 yards in his first game with the Cardinals? You can tweet us, let us know. That's going to be a tough one considering the offensive line. I don't think so. (laughs) That offensive line, Oh, he does think so. It's a pass-first offense anyway. Man, Man, don't give that man two Bruce Aaron's got two run plays. Yeah, and he's only going to play first and and second down. 20 rushes. Come on, McDonald. Yeah, we'll see. Time now for Mic Drop. Oh. Garofalo, you're emptying your notebook. I love it. Uh, I know the Fall League meeting, Great. that's coming up on Tuesday. And um, there's going to be a lot on, on, on the docket there a in lot terms of, of topics. Yeah. But the player demonstrations during the National Anthem. Will be one of the bigger ones. Possibly a policy change. Well, maybe not. Well, no. Well, it, it, there might be. And there might mm-hmm. be a, 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 the long run. But right now, there's no proposal. There's no schedule for a vote here. What we do have is a group of, let's say, about 8 to 12 players who will be on hand to talk to the owners. There's been communication all along here. This will be part of the process. And I am told what the players would love to have here. What's their end goal here? Their end goal is to get the owners to understand their causes and to say we're sympathetic to them and we will do what we need to do to get you guys to be effective in these causes and to to do what you want to do in the community. And one of the teams that's really done a nice job of that so far, I am told, Mike Rob, is the New York Giants. John Mara has spoken to his leadership council. He's brought them in. He's used them as a sounding board. And he has told them, I am willing to set you up with lawmakers in the community that you can go talk to and maybe enact some of these things that you really want to get done. So the the players would love if the Giants and their model right now that they have going would be spread across the league. All 32 teams have that. What do the owners want back? We know. If it's not all 32, it's close to 32. We'd love to have the players standing. So look for that to try to be the compromise. Help us out in what we want to get done. And you guys on Sunday, keep the demonstrations to a minimum. Yeah, and our one-on-one with Commissioner Roger Goodell, that's going to be coming up a little bit later in the show. Nate Burleson had a chance to talk to him about it, but you mentioned the Giants. Yes, I did. Uh, There's a lot of drama going on. It's kind of like a soap opera. (laughs) They have suspensions, injuries, everything. What's going on in that locker room? What you've got right now is Ben McAdoo trying to get these guys to understand that we are still fighting here and truly does believe that he's got a lot of guys in that locker room who do believe that, but he's 0-5 right now. They've lost their star receiver. They've lost their number two receiver. They'll be without their number three receiver. So things are dire right now. And that's why McAdoo is really trying to maintain control of that locker room. That's why we saw the suspension with Dominique rogers Cromartie when he left a couple of days ago after he was told he's going to be inactive. You've also got a situation with the other cornerback, Eli Apple. He was sitting for the first three series of the game against the Chargers. They didn't call it a demotion. Steve oh, Spagnuolo, the def- it was not a demotion. It was disciplinary. Last so. week, I am told via sources during practice that his his conduct during practice wasn't great and that he was uh, speaking back to one of the coaches there. So he was sat for the demotion. first three series. It was disciplinary, not a demotion because of his play on the field, even though he struggled in that department. He also, during the game, after Dominique rogers Cromarty left the field and went back to the locker room, he came off the field in a fit of frustration. Someone near Frank Mara, who was John's brother on the sideline, said something he didn't like. He yelled back in that person's direction. There was some confusion as to whether he was actually yelling at Frank Mara, who was the Giants' VP of Community Relations. So Eli Apple, they want to make sure that he gets his head in the game, stays calm, works on his craft, gets going. Right now, Ben McAdoo truly believes in that locker room that there are guys that are still bought in. There's a couple of guys like DRC that maybe have gotten frustrated, lost it, wants to get everybody in line, truly believes that the energy is still there for an 0-5 team that's in a dire situation. It's tough to keep that energy at 0-5. Yeah. Yes. You know, you, you, yes. you I mean, no much, wonder these guys are frustrated. You pretty much think your season 
is over with. And I'm not going to say a demotion for Eli Apple, but it's hard when you're struggling. He's another one of those guys who's struggling. And I've been there before. Mm -hmm. I've struggled a few years in my career. So it's going to be tough. He got to fight his way out of it. Nobody can't help you but yourself when it comes down to football. Mama can't help you. Daddy can't help you. Sister, wife can't help you. Once you step on them lines and on that field, you got to help yourself and got to understand at some certain point in my career, I will struggle, but I will bounce back. That's what Eli Apple has to do because he still is a, he still is a young corner mm -hmm. and he still have a good upside. With DRC, Dominique Rogers Cromati, he might be frustrated, again, on his playtime. Mm -hmm. So he's seeing the secondary struggle. Yeah. He's seeing Janoris Jenkins sometimes. He's been going through an injury. Go on, put me back out there. Out there, meaning at the corner. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, I can understand from a coach's standpoint, it's hard to find a nickel corner. And DRC is a good nickel corner. You have to cover a lot of ground sitting yeah. inside them nickel packages. Hey, I, uh, don't you think New York misses Tom Coughlin? Oh, man. The, 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 the disciplinary and the guy that can get this locker room back on track. Because, see, what I've always doubted with Ben McAdoo. You see what is, he got going on in Jacksonville, right? Exactly. You see, you see how they're playing. I, I've always doubted with Ben McAdoo uh, the leadership part of it. Uh, not that he can call plays. Yeah, he can call plays and be effective as a play caller. But I'm talking about calm the guys like Odell Beckham down. I think a guy like Odell Beckham, and he is a great talent, probably the best, one of the best players, regardless yes. of position, in the National Football League. But when you allow a guy to come into your locker room or you allow a guy to come into your organization and do what he wants, you had um, uh, decision makers say, yeah, this is Odell's team. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's just be honest about it. All other players feel like they can go out there and make comments and say things like, th like, like that without respecting the people on the other side. And to me, who in that organization, whether it's Jerry Reese, Ben McAdoo, Eli Manning, mm -hmm. somebody needs to look everybody, the entire organization in the face and say, oh, no, nah, we got to get back on track. That's when the winning starts. Hey, right? yeah. hey, Mike <laughs> Rob, I, I don't know, but when he threw Coach McAdoo, mm -hmm. when I felt like he threw Eli under the bus, that's when the tables had turned. Mm. When he threw, because now the player's looking at it like, if I'm struggling, are you going to say as a coach you could have called that yeah. time out? Yep. Or are you going to say it's my fault? Which is why McAdoo's <laughs> trying to get these guys, rein them in, and he it's has hard. to act when he sees guys like DRC and, and Eli Apple not respecting authority. And Tom Coughlin dealt, Tom Coughlin dealt with the same stuff and was able to rein him in. This oh, yeah. is an opportunity right. for Ben McAdoo to show what he has as a head coach. I would imagine at this point, though, it's gone so far that Correct. that's a really tough spot for McAdoo to be in. So, hey, NFL. I, mean, I know. We'll see, uh, we'll see how that 